Hello again, all you fishlots out there, and welcome to another edition of Fishing with Johnny Fishlot. And today, I'm excited to bring you part two of a multi-part series. We're going to follow catfish and how their behaviors change from the late winter to early spring all the way through the summer. And I'll also show you how your fishing tactics should change both in your pre-trip planning of where you plan to locate those fish, as well as how to adjust your tactics out on the water. And tip number one is a spot that worked yesterday may not necessarily work today. Again, spots are only as good as the weather conditions dictate and what the fish are doing. So knowing that as you head into your pre-trip planning, as well as adapting your tactics when you're out on the water, will help you catch more fish. Stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to share with you a lot more lessons like that from this day out on the water. And if you're new here, my name is John, and I'm the Chief Resident Fishlot here at Fishing with Johnny Fishlot. And my passion is to bring to you tips and tricks that I learned from 30 years of fishing. Eight of those years were spent professionally fishing, where I fished every day in order to earn money, and bring to you those lessons learned so that you can maximize your time out on the water. I understand many of you fishlots want to fish a lot more than you do. You're busy with your family, you have school commitments, or possibly you just work copious amounts of time at your jobs. This channel is dedicated to helping you when you do get that spare precious time to go fishing and catch the most amount of fish. So let's get into it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. All right, guys, let's get straight into it and right into the fishing action. You'll notice that I'll be adjusting my baits quite a bit during these drifts, and that is simply to keep my bait one to two feet off the river bottom. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One, of course, is there's a lot of snags down there. There's rocks and trees and whatever else down there that could snag you up if you're dragging bottom with literally an egg sinker and a circle hook. And so keeping them off the bottom will prevent you from getting hung. And on the fishing aspect of it, you want to keep your baits about one to two feet off the bottom so that when you do pass a fish, it'll pass right in front of their face and they're more likely to hit just like this fish. What I'm really doing here is I'm suspend fishing. I'm using a Carolina rig and an eight ounce egg sinker with anywhere from an eight to 10 odd hook. And yeah, I'm just drifting in front of these fish. And the wonderful thing about suspend fishing, what I'm doing here, is that when a fish does take down the rod, as you just saw, I mean, they take it down hard. And you can see that fish spinned off some drag and actually turned around the entire kayak into the wind, which caused a little bit of audio issues, but not a big deal. But man, it's fun when they hit and just spin you all around. And there's a fish right there. Wow, what a hit. What a hit. 30 feet of water. He slammed it. Alright, come on up here, buddy. Whoop. Beating up my boat. Beating up my boat. And you're about to hear quite a bit of wind here. My apologies about that. Like I said earlier, the fish kind of turned me around into the wind, but I'll sort that out um, after this clip as we get into the video. All right, guys. All right, guys, look at the size of that one. Not a bad way to start the day. All right, I didn't have my GoPro run in again but all right let's let him go there he goes one of these days i'll have my gopro on and make for a decent video for you guys and so you'll notice that i'm adjusting my baits yet again and so what i do here is is i drop the weight all the way down to the bottom and then i'll point my rod tip into the water while I'm still maintaining contact with the weight. So then I'll pick the rod tip up and I'll put it in the rod holder. This method ensures that I'm always one to two feet above the river bottom to maintain my baits right in that perfect strike zone for the catfish. 
And so the way I'm fishing this is I'm starting in about 35 feet of water and I'm actually going to drift up the main channel edge. So I'll fish from about 35 feet of water into 20 feet of water and as I come up, you know, the baits will start to drag bottom and I'll have to constantly readjust. All right, guys, didn't have the GoPro going, but um, yep, got one on now. Second one, uh, it's a little guy. Bubbles coming out. It's good, 25 feet of water. There we go. Uh, little guy, little guy. We'll get, we'll get him in and uh, we'll get him back. But other one was, was decent fish. Come here now. The other fish was decent. I have to give him a little bit more line. This one's a little bit smaller. Come here, Mr. Catfish. Open up your mouth. Open. All right, got him. There we go, though. I'll take it. Uh, there you go, guys. Another nice little little catfish. Little guy, a little dink, but I'll take it. It's been a while since we were catching fish, and now we got uh, we got two in a row now. So two in about ten minutes. Let's put him back. Whoop, there he goes. Alright. Well, alright, fish a lots, let's get straight into the sonar chart. And again, if you're unfamiliar with sonar charts or how they apply to your pre-trip planning or even how to apply them while you're out on the water to maximize your time and catch more fish, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to make a YouTube video just talking about sonar charts and what you should be looking for to find fish and catch more fish. But for right now, let's get into this specific spot and how I use this chart to maximize my time and catch a bunch of fish. It's still early spring, so these fish are going to want to move up into these shallow areas to warm up as well as to find their, their prey items, but they're also still gonna want access to that deeper water when it gets nighttime and this weather or this water cools off a lot quicker than the main channel or the wind starts to blow or you have a cold front move through. They're still gonna want access to this deeper water, which is gonna maintain its water temperature a lot better than these shallow bay areas. However, on this particular day, the fish were moving up into these bay areas to feed. So you may say, well, why didn't you fish in this bay area? And for exactly that reason of the fish transiting in and out of the shallow water is why I picked right here to fish. And think of this main channel as a fish highway, okay? And, and more specifically, these main channel ledges as a fish highway. These fish are gonna travel down until they come into these areas and find their shallow water. Another thing that sticks out is a man-made secondary channel right here. So human beings came along and dredged this section of the river to make this marina right here, which is a restricted area and you can't fish there, which doesn't bother me one bit because the catfish don't know that. So the catfish are still gonna come in, whether it's a restricted area or not, and they're gonna make their way into the back bay. Now Johnny Fishlot is gonna position himself right here and drift this edge right here, just as it's coming up into shallow water, trying to intercept those fish coming out of deep water to shallow water and out of their shallow water feeding grounds back into deep water. And as those fish move in and out of the main channel up into the shallows, I'll be waiting right here and they're gonna have to cross my baits. And fish a lots, if you're getting value from this video, please go ahead and smash that like button and hit subscribe. So let's get right back into the video and show you some more action from the water. So this is about par for the course here. You could tell I'm fiddling with my GoPro and I just turned it off to conserve battery. And of course this happens. Fish. And so all that beeping that you hear oh, basically my. when I leaned over to get the fish, I oh, clicked goodness. off of all my oh. controls for the Mancota autopilot. So typically what I like to do is I like to hook into a fish and then spot lock so that when I'm done with the fish, I'm still in the exact same spot. My baits are still in the exact same spot that this fish hit in case I have any of these hungry friends are around. And then I could hit spot lock again and continue my drift. <sighs> 
Well guys, spot lock was a good idea. I, I had the camera off again. Again. I just can't seem to get it right. And this, this gizzard shed body section just got pounded. Pounded by this cat right here. That's not a bad one. It's a decent fish, but man, they pull in 30 feet of water. There you go, not a bad, not a bad fish right there. Boy, and he hit, he hit that like a ton of bricks. So it's a gizzard shad body piece right there. Let me make sure I'm still in spot lock. I hit my spot lock button and it put me right out of the spot. Silly. All right. There we go. All right. All right, let's uh let's give him his day here. Not a bad fish. Not a bad fish. Come on up here, buddy. Come on up here, Mr. Catfish. Got it. Not a bad fish at all. The biggest one of the day. Definitely the biggest one of the day. See if I can grab a hold of that mouth. Ah, don't flip on me now. Oh. Okay. All right. Got the camera situated. He's trying to bite me. It's all right. If I had somebody put a hook in my mouth, I'd be a little PO'd as well. He just won't let me get the hook out. All right, that's a nice fish, guys. It's not a bad one. There you go. That's gizzard shad body section. And uh, he's got a parasite on his... You know what, catfish? I'm going to help you out. You got these parasites on you. I'm going to help this catfish out. You got parasites. The Potomac River is just loaded with garbage and look he's got these parasites on him and I'm see get caught by Johnny Fish a lot you get a cleaning see that come here this one all right one more look at him guys not a monster by any means but definitely a nice fish glad to have him it's been slow this main channel is doing the trick all right, let's put him back. Off he goes. Well, if you found value in this content, right. please remember to hit subscribe, smash that like button, and remember to hit that notification bell so that when I post new videos, you can be one of the first ones to tune in and get some helpful tips and tricks to allow you to catch more fish. And so I actually cut this day in half for video purposes. The purpose of this video was to focus on locations and where you should position yourself in order to maximize your chances to catch fish in the early spring. The next video I'll post is going to focus around the different types of baits. And to summarize the lessons learned on this video, again, a spot that worked yesterday may not necessarily work today. In this case, when the wind dropped off, those fish were looking for those transition zones between that 35 feet of water and 25 feet of water heading into the shallows and the back bays that were being warmed up by the sun. And there were three different baits used on this trip that I'll get into much more detail on the next video, but one of which was gizzard shad, which I caught myself. The other was store-bought salmon discarded for fish stock, so it came in at around 60 cents. And the third, of course, was procured chicken liver. And if you missed part one of this video, feel free to hit the link provided in the end card where I discuss how heavy north winds could really affect where those fish lay up in those kind of conditions. In that case, they were looking for wind-protected shorelines, which is where I caught all the fish. Well, all right, guys, thank you so much for your time. There's a lot of content out there. I'll see you out on the water.